Okay, two um, hidden facts about that slide. Uh, and it's easier to read than last week's or last video's slide. Um, but the question, do we have an influence on the rapture? I actually answer it, but I always want to be careful that I to separate what I know from what I'm speculating. So uh, I, I wrote it very, very small. Hone in on it here. Pan down there. Yeah, yeah, yes. I think, yes. I think we do. I think we do. And I think you're going to find the evidence for that compelling. The second and more meaningless hidden fact about this title card, you see, there's different fonts that I used. See the word timing across the clock? I spent eight minutes finding the Rolex font, the font that the Rolex watch company uses to write Rolex. And then after I did it, I realized nobody on the planet is going to be able to figure that out, even if you worked for Rolex, that I did that. So I had to tell you, because it took me eight minutes to do that. Oh, I, I've squandered time a lot in a lot worse fashions than that. Uh, you know, that doesn't even make the, the top 1,000 most squandered moments in Stan's life. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, Repo Man 64 He was kind enough to... Uh, have his audience come over and watch the last video. And uh, that's, that's not something that people normally do on YouTube, is send their audience somewhere else. But I, I think it's clear to me that Repo Man 64 is here about the truth, too. And we're all watching, and we're watching in our different way. Uh, and we need to, because unfortunately, the church isn't going to be much help here. Well, we're the church. I mean, the brick and mortar church organized building thing. They don't appear to be on the same script with this, at least the vast majority of them. I was in my car this past week. I'm on the Christian teaching station because I think Sean Hannity was on the uh, news talk. And if I hear him once a week, I've heard everything he's going to say for the entire week. Not that I don't like him, but he is repetitive. Anyway, so the guy I'm listening to, a big name pastor, and he's going to talk about, wouldn't you know it, the seven letters to the churches of Asia Minor. And the computer voice in my car came on and went, oh, no. And I said, yeah, yeah, you're telling me, oh, no. And I knew it. And he got to the part where Jesus is coming soon, and he said, you got to understand. He said that 2,000 years ago to the churches of Asia Minor. He's saying it from the perspective of God's time. In God's time, he's coming soon. Oh, I wish they would stop doing that. When they do that, it robs us of the urgency of the message. Everybody listening goes, oh, okay, well, if it's God's timing, it be a million years from now as far as we know, right? Urgency is killed. Now, he's not trying to kill the urgency. He just can't figure out why Jesus would say that. And we should have known. We should have known exactly what was going on with the seven letters to the churches. A thousand years ago, the church should have come out, maybe out of one of their councils they used to have back then, right? So they come out of the council and they say, we're going to issue an edict here. This is going to be part of church dogma from here on out. And it regards the seven letters in the book of Revelation. Here's what's going on. You see, when the book of Revelation uses a red dragon to represent Satan or a beast rising out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns, and that's representing the Antichrist, or there's a drunken prostitute that represents uh, the, the, the mystery Babylon, well, so also the seven letters to the churches in Asia Minor represent the end time church, the church that will be on the world right before the tribulation begins. We know that's true. We know that's true because he makes promises, warnings, and threats to those churches that are only applicable if he were talking to the church right before the great tribulation begins. For instance, this is them saying this a thousand years ago. We should have known this. For instance, when he says to the church of Philadelphia, I will keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come on the whole world and try everybody who's on the planet. In other words, what he's saying is, if I don't intervene, you will slide into the great tribulation. Well, that can only be to one church, the church on the earth, 
that represents the Church of Philadelphia that's about to go into the tribulation. He is going to save them from going into the tribulation. When he tells the Church of Sardis, if you don't stop, start watching, I will come upon you as a thief. He's only going to come upon the church moments before the great testing, the great tribulation comes. Of course he's talking to the church at the end time. So what we've got to do as a church, this is what they'd be saying a thousand years ago, is try and determine, are we the end time church? And the only way we can do that is watch. And as we're watching to precondition ourselves to believe what he's saying, which is, I'm coming soon. He could only say that to the church right before the great tribulation. So if we determine that that's us, we need to immediately believe those promises, threats, and warnings. If, if they had done that, I mean, right now, if they had done that, all Bible-believing churches would just be, an, it, it would be so fun to go to church right now as they would be announcing, we're it, we know we're it, and we're, and we're claiming the promise, the Lord is coming, hallelujah, the Lord is coming, and he's coming soon. Unless you die suddenly, you're going to live to see him coming. Can you imagine to end or start your week like that, go there on Sunday morning and hear that? Wow, that's what should have been happening, but it's not. It's not. We've got to make ourselves believe it. We've, we've got to gin each other up, not because it's propaganda, because it's the truth. And it's, and it's good to be around Christians who are saying the same thing that I'm saying and you're saying, he is coming soon. And if we'd known the truth about the seven letters, that would already have been hardwired into us. But there's a problem in the Church of Philadelphia. People say, well, there are two churches that don't get criticized, the Church of Philadelphia and the Church of Smyrna. That's not true. There's only one church that doesn't get criticized, and that's the Church of Smyrna. The Church of Philadelphia gets criticized, and here it is. I know that you have but little power. Now, that's a criticism. It's kind and it's gentle, but it's criticism. They have little power, which equates to little faith. They have some faith. But they don't have great faith. And that's a problem because we need great faith, our better, stronger faith, to accept the stunning words that he's telling us, that he's coming soon. But we've been conditioned to forget that, forget all of that, forget that. He didn't mean that. He's meaning it from the perspective of God's timing. And now we've got to switch gears and go, no, he's talking to us. And he's talking to us on our terms. He is coming soon as we recognize soon. And it takes a little more than just a little faith to grasp that, doesn't it? And I, and I realized, I, that's pretty much me. Look what he tells them next. And yet, you've kept my word and not denied my name. So they have an intellectual uh, conviction about him mixed in with a little faith. And don't get me wrong, O ye of little faith is light years ahead of O ye of no faith. Because our Lord isn't trying to exclude people. He's not trying to come up with a bar so high that only a few can get in. Imagine if he said to the Church of Philadelphia, I will keep you from the hour of testing because you have great faith. I'd be sick to my stomach. I'd go, I don't think I'm going then if it's based on that. But even with just a little faith, you're accepted. But we want to strengthen that so we can truly grasp and enjoy the truth of what he's telling us. He is coming soon. Now, one of the ways you could test yourself, I think, would be this. If the Lord showed up at your house, you're the only one there, he shows up, does that thing where, you know, he walks through the wall and he's suddenly in front of you. And after he touches you and tells you, fear not, and you slowly get to your shaky feet and he says your name three times in a row, and he says, I'm coming soon. The time is at hand. Behold, I am coming soon. Surely, I am coming soon. And then he disappears. Would your belief in that, because of that visitation, be far greater than your conviction when you read it in the Bible? If the answer is yes, you don't have great faith. My answer is yes. 
I would be much, I'd have much greater faith in it after that visit than I do now reading it. People of great faith would go, well, it was sure, it was unbelievable to see him and I'm glad for the confirmation, but I already believed it. That's great faith. So I'm somewhere back here somewhere, you know, maybe you're up there with just a little bit of room between the visitation and reading it in the Bible by yourself. But I think he's trying to help us grow our faith with the beginning of each letter, the seven letters to us, the end time church, to remind us who's telling you these things. He's about to tell each church something very important, but he says up front, who's telling them. These are the words that start the letter to the seven churches. The words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. These things says the son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. These things say the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. And of course, when he says he's the beginning, he's not saying I, I was the first thing created. He's the beginning and the end. Father says the same thing in the book of Revelation. He, they're both the beginning and the end. They're at the head of all things. Neither one has a beginning or an end. He's the initiator and the reason for the creation of God. You're not dealing with the guy next door or some man who says what he says in, in the letters to the seven churches. So when he says to us, I am coming soon, and I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial that's about to come on the world. Now, some people might say, uh, well, what if I don't believe we're quite there yet? I, I, you know, if you're watching, I'm, I'm stunned that anyone could say that. But if, if that's you, now, I would really pray about it. I'm not saying you're in danger. If you're watching and if you're living up to the other, you know, requirements that, you know, you keep the word and you don't deny his name, you've just come to the wrong conclusion. Uh, you know, I, I, I think you're okay, but I really think, though, you're, you're wrong. Here's a post that I saw on Gab. I don't know if this guy's a Christian or not. And I think he really says what a lot of us feel. Honestly, feels like we're just barely keeping a lid on this thing. Entire thing's busting at the seams. If I woke up tomorrow to find out the entire thing collapsed, I wouldn't be surprised a bit. I've never felt this kind of worldwide tension in all my time. It's definitely right before something happens. Now, maybe he's secular, and maybe he just knows something is up, or maybe he's a Christian and he's trying to say... Something big is coming. Either way, he's right. He's right. I, the world is in chaos and, and in a stress of nations like I've never seen before. It's all over the world. It's, it's amazing. And for those who are not kept from the hour of trial, in a few years, they're going to look back on 2022 as the good old days. I mean, it's hard to, hard to believe as that is. That's true. I mean, there are going to be people in the future going, do you remember back in 2022 and all we had was a moron for president and a giggle box for the vice president and a horrible economy and $5 gas and drag queens going to our elementary schools? person next to him will go, yeah, good times, good times. A little tear forming in their eyes, nostalgic over 2022. It's about to get a whole lot worse. So we want to be in the church of Philadelphia while the door is open. And we want to escape the time of testing that's about to come on the whole world. Now, I can show you on the timeline where it is. It's right here. It's the great event that comes out of the about a half hour of silence in heaven. And it's an amazing event. What we want to know is, can we influence the timing of that? And by the way, before I start that, you know, every now and then I'll run across in the comments section, 
it's almost always a guy. It is almost never a woman. Always a guy who says, I've prayed to be left behind. I want to be here on the earth during the great tribulation for him. Uh, how about this? Stick to the plan. Okay? Stick to the plan. Pray always that you are worthy to escape these things and stand before the Son of Man. That's the plan. I will keep you from the hour of testing that's about to come on the whole world. Stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Don't go off on your own. Stick to the plan. That's the plan. Can you imagine uh, Noah, you know, ark doors getting ready to close in just a couple of minutes. One of the sons goes, Dad, uh, what, what is it, Ham? Yeah, I think I want to stay behind. Really, Ham? Really? You want to stay behind? Mm-hmm. I think so. I think so. Okay. A uh, ham? Shut up and get on the boat. That's the plan. Let's stick to the plan. There is, and, and the people will point to it. Oh, you pre-tribbers, you just want to escape. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I absolutely do. And he told me that's the plan. Pray always that you're worthy. That's the part I got to make sure of. Because if I'm worthy, I get to escape all the things that are coming and stand before the Son of Man. If that's not your plan, and you want to stay behind, or you're not watching, I hope that works out for you. Hey, maybe you can take a selfie with the two witnesses. Okay, that was mean-spirited. <laughs> that was a little mean-spirited. Okay, let's leave that out. <laughs> let's leave that out. I don't get these people. Of course we want to get off the planet. The sooner, the better. And maybe we can make it sooner. I think we can. Look what it says. This is pretty interesting. When he opened the seventh seal and there was silence in heaven for about half an hour, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. That's where we're kept from the hour of trial. And it certainly looks like part of his decision is based on the prayers of the saints that are going up before him. We need to fill that censer up with prayers. If I'm wrong, it won't hurt. I, I would still like some of my prayers in that censer when that angel, Nolan Ryan, fastball throws it at the earth. I, I'd like to have some prayers in there, but it may be that he's waiting for a full number of prayers to come in saying, what? The spirit and the bride say, come. We are desiring your son. Because he wants to, if his, when he sends his son back, he wants a big group to welcome him and to be expecting him. And it's very likely he's waiting for that censor to fill with the prayers of the saints. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong on that. I could be wrong on that. But what would it hurt to urge people at this time, wake up, see what's going on, take the promises, the warnings, and the threats Inside, embedded in the letters to the seven churches, they are to us. Take them seriously and say together in unison with the Spirit and the bride. They both say, come. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching.